sideline Russian intervention in Ukraine as a campaign issue, which is effectively a priority for Vladimir Putin. There is a lot in the dossier that is yet to be proven, but increasingly, as we'll hear throughout the day, allegations are checking out. And this one seems to be as accurate as they come. In fact, there is also one pattern I want to point out before yielding back. Manafort, fire. Page, fire. Flynn, fire. Why? They were hired because of their Russian connections. They were fired. However, because their connections became public, they were effectively culpable. But they were also the fall guys. So I think after we hear Mr. Quigley's line of questioning, we might guess who could be next. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ranking Member, I yield back. Time. Um, I yield the uh, balance to uh, Representative Speer. Thank you, Ranking Member. Thank you, gentlemen, for your service um, to our country. You know, I think it's really important as we sit here that we explain this to the American people in a way that they can understand it. Why are we talking about all of this? So my first question to each of you is, is Russia our adversary? Mr. Comey? Yes. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Is, do they intend to do us harm? They intend to ensure, I believe, that they gain advantage at our expense. Director Comey? Yes, I want to be, uh, harm can have many meanings. They're an adversary, and so they want to resist us. One of the terms that we hear often is hybrid warfare. And I'd like to just um, give a short definition of what it is. It blends conventional warfare, irregular warfare, and cyber warfare. The aggressor intends to avoid attribution or retribution. So would you say that Russia engaged in hybrid warfare in its effort to undermine our democratic process and engage in our electoral process? Director Comey? I don't think I would use the term warfare. I think you'd, you'd want to ask experts in the definition of war. They engaged in a multifaceted uh, campaign of active measures to undermine our democracy uh, and hurt one of the candidates and, and hope to help one of the other candidates. I'd agree with the director. All right. Well, thank you both. I actually think that their engagement was an act of war an act of hybrid warfare, and I think that's why the American people should be concerned about it. Now, in, in terms of trying to understand this, I, I think of a, a spider web with a tarantula in the middle. And the tarantula, in my view, is Vladimir Putin, who is entrapping many people to do his bidding and to engage with him. And I would include those like Roger Stone and Carter Page and Michael Caputo and Wilbur Ross and Paul Manafort and Rex Tillerson. Uh, I'd like to focus first on Rex Tillerson in the three minutes I have here. Uh, he was the CEO of ExxonMobil. In 2008, he said that the likelihood of U.S.-Russia businesses um, was, in fact, a poor investment, that Russia was a poor investment climate. That was in 2008. In 2011, he closed a $500 billion deal with Rosneft Oil. The CEO of Rosneft is Igor Sechin, who is a confidant of President Putin, second most powerful man in Russia, and probably a former KGB agent. The deal gives Exxon access to the Black Sea and the Kara Sea and Siberia for oil development. Rosneft gets minority interest in Exxon in Texas and the Gulf. Rex Tillerson um, calls Sechin a good friend. In 2012, Mr. Tillerson and Mr. Sechin go on a road show here in the United States to talk about this great deal that they had just consummated. 
Also in 2012, there's a video of President Putin and Mr. Tillerson toasting champagne at the deal. And in 2013, Mr. Tillerson receives the Russian Order of Friendship. And he sits right next to President Putin at the event. So my question to you, Director Comey, is, is it of value to President Putin, knowing what you know of him and that his interest in doing harm to us, is it of benefit to Mr. Putin to have Rex Tillerson as the Secretary of State? I can't answer that question. Admiral Rogers? Ma'am, I'm not. I'm not in a position to answer that question. All right. So in 2014, uh, Igor Session is sanctioned, and he laments that he no longer will be able to come to the United States to motorcycle ride with Mr. Tillerson. Uh, could you give me uh, um, an understanding of what are some of the reasons that we impose sanctions? Director Comey? On Session? Well, just in general. Again, you'd have to ask an expert, but uh, from my general knowledge, it's to uh, punish activities that are criminal in nature, that involve war crimes, that involve violations of UN resolutions or United States law in some other way. It's to communicate um, and enforce uh, foreign policy interests and, and values of the United States of America. That's my general sense, but an expert might describe it much better. Admiral Rogers? I, I would echo the director's comments. It's also a tool that we use to attempt to drive and shape the choices and actions of others. So in the case of Igor <clears throat> Session, who was sanctioned by the United States, in part to uh, draw attention to the fact that Russia had invaded Crimea, it's an effort to try and send a very strong message uh, to Russia. Is that not true? I think that's right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll yield back for now. Gentleman yields back. I'll yield myself 15 minutes and now yield to the gentlelady from Florida, Ms. Frost-Layton. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's never acceptable, we can all agree, for any foreign power to interfere with our electoral process. And this committee has long been focused on Russia's reprehensible conduct. And uh, I agree with you, Director Comey, when you say this investigation that is ongoing, we will follow the facts uh, wherever they lead on a bipartisan level, and uh, there will be no sacred cows. Uh, there are many important issues at stake, as, as you gentlemen have, have heard. There is bipartisan agreement on the danger of illegal leaks, and and our ability to reauthorize important programs upon which our intelligence community relies. But I want to assure the American people that there's also bipartisan agreement on getting to the bottom of Russian meddling in our election, which must remain the focus of this investigation and yours. So Admiral Rogers, I agree in what you said, that a public acknowledgment uh, of this uh, uh, foreign meddling to be a problem is important uh, as we move forward. And following um, on Congressman LaBiondo's uh, questions and, and based on this theme, I'd like to ask you, gentlemen, if you could describe what, if anything, uh, Russia did in this election that, to your knowledge, they did or they didn't do in previous elections, uh, how, how it was, were their actions different in this election than in, than in previous ones? I'd say the biggest difference from my perspective was both the use of cyber, the hacking as a vehicle to physically gain access to information, to extract that information, and then to make it widely publicly available without any alteration or change. And the only thing that I'd add is they were unusually loud in their intervention. It's almost as if they didn't care that we knew uh, what they were doing or that they wanted us to see what they were doing. It was very noisy, their intrusions uh, in different institutions. And uh, what specifically, based on this loudness, did, did the FBI or the NSA do to, to prevent 
or counter this Russian active measure that, uh, that we read about in the intelligence community assessment. As loud as they were, what did we do to counter that? Well, um, among other things, we alerted people who had been victims of intrusions to permit them to uh, tighten their systems to see if they couldn't kick the Russian actors out. We also, as a government, supplied information to all the states so they could equip themselves to make sure there was no successful effort to affect the vote, and there was none, as we said earlier. And then the government as a whole, um, in October, called it out. And, and I believe it was Director Clapper and then Secretary Jay Johnson issued a statement saying this is what the Russians are doing, it's sort of an inoculation. And the loudness to which you, you refer, uh, perhaps they were doing these kinds of actions previously in other elections, but they were not doing it as loudly. What, why do you think that they did not mind being loud and being found out? I don't know the answer for sure. I think part, their number one mission is to undermine the credibility of our entire democracy enterprise of this nation. And so it might be that they wanted us to help them by, by telling people what they were doing. Their loudness, uh, in a way, would, would be counting on us to amplify it by telling the American people what we saw and freaking people out about how the Russians might be undermining our elections successfully. And so that might have been part of their plan. I don't know for sure. I, I, I agree with Director Comey. Um, I mean, a big difference to me in the past was while there was cyber activity, we never saw in previous presidential elections information being published on such a massive scale that had been you know, illegally removed both from private uh, in individuals as well as organizations associated with the democratic process, both inside the government and outside the government. And this uh, massive amount and this, and this loudness, now that it's become public knowledge, now that we have perhaps satisfied their, their, their thirst, that it has become such a huge deal, do you expect their interference uh, to be amplified in future U.S. elections? Do you see any evidence of that in European elections? Or, or do you think that this public acknowledgement would, uh, would uh, tamper down their, their volatility? I'll let Mike Rogers, maybe I'll just say as an initial matter, they'll be back. I mean, they'll be back in 2020, they may be back in 2018. And one of the lessons they may draw from this is that they were successful because they introduced chaos and division and discord and so doubt about the nature of this amazing country of ours and our democratic process. It's possible they're misreading that as it worked. And so we'll come back and hit them again in 2020. I don't know, but we think we have to assume they're coming back. I fully expect them to continue this, this level of activity because I, our sense is that they have come to the conclusion that it generated a positive outcome for them in the sense um, that calling into question democratic process, for example, is one element of the strategy. We're working closely. We, our FBI. FBI teammates, others were working closely with our European teammates to provide the insights that we have seen to try to assist them as they themselves, France um, and Germany, for example, about to undergo significant uh, national leadership elections over the course of the next two months. And in, in, uh, in terms of the European uh, elections, what, what have you seen or any information that you could share with us about the, the Russian interference? So you've seen process. some of the same things that we saw in the U.S. in terms of disinformation, fake news, uh, attempts to a release of information to embarrass individuals. You're seeing that play out to some extent in European elections right now. We look forward to continuing with you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Generally yields back. Mr. Turner's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Comey, Admiral Rogers, thank you uh, for being here today. And for your, what it appears to be, it attempts at being forthcoming with the committee. Uh, I also want to thank the chairman and the ranking membership. Um, this is a bipartisan effort. Uh, I think as you